This is a download from the outdoorstation.co.uk. Number 393. You're listening to the 2015 TGO Challenge, sponsored by the Great Outdoors magazine, Handbag Footwear and Fial Raven. Part 5. Moving on, it's now Friday morning, the 15th of May. Our wedding anniversary. Happy anniversary, darling. Thank you, sweetheart. And as usual, I'm treating Rose to a romantic 15k walk to celebrate. We're heading out of uh, Aviemore, having had a pleasant evening in Aviemore. Good stay at the youth hostel, which was lovely, suitably clean, well, really clean, fantastic kitchen, lovely reception. Unfortunately, creaking floorboards. No matter where you went in the place, it creaked, especially when you're trying to get to sleep, which was a great shame. But otherwise, had a good night, and I'm joined by my walking compatriots, Lee and Tony, who stayed slightly longer than I did last night, watching the fantastic band Tweed at uh, the Caledonian Hotel, who were really rocking the place, weren't they, Lee? Yes, yeah, uh, Cairngorm Hotel. That's what, That's, what did I say? Cal- oh, Cal- yeah, Cairngorm Hotel. See, I was even in the wrong place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were absolutely fantastic, um, as well as the Guinness was, and, and good company we had as well. And so we're starting the day fresh as a daisy, but you guys are slightly, slightly lethargic this morning? Just a, just a little bit, a little bit uh, worse to wear for Guinness, but um, I'm, I'll be okay in a few minutes. <laughs> Well, the walk's been fairly interesting for both of us. You chose to go over the um, uh, Corrieric, and we went up Glendoe. Uh, any changes on the Corrieric Pass at all from the last couple of years you went over? Um, no, still as many machines up there, and it's a bit like a highway. But I was uh, very envious of you going over the um, Monolia. But, uh, sadly, my Paramo um, failed and leaking like a sieve, so I had to play safe. Definitely the best best move. And then from there to Aviemore, has it been fairly steady walking? Yes, yeah, it's, it's not a bad uh, way to go, really. We camped at the Bothy at the east of King Goosey, which is always a pleasant place. And uh, laid in the tent, um, looking at the sunset over the Monolia. It was quite nice. So looking at this year, 2015, I mean, this is your 11th crossing now, isn't it? Yes, that's yeah, 11th. Yeah, 11th. Uh, any changes you've noticed this year in the challenge generally, either sort of the people or anything that's changed on any of the areas we've been through, villages, that sort of thing? Um, not really. A little bit more um, sort of construction going on, whether it be wind farms or hydro schemes, but uh, generally it seems more money's being spent on the infrastructure. But that's about all really, to be honest. I was expecting a lot more of the sort of pubs to be closed with the, license, um, the drink drive laws changing, but everything seems, still seems to be open. Yes, that's right. I've not seen any em- empty pubs, but I suppose we only pass through the, the popular parts. I suppose getting out of the town in the small villages, probably things are different. So today's route, uh, where well, we're joining forces for the next few days, is the same that we did in 2011. Uh, I'd like to just explain where we're going. I'm going up to Barnet Moor and I'm um, going to camp near the old stables and then down Glen Arne um, uh, on the, and then on into Ballater. So, um, but that's two night stops to get through. Well, I see um, this year the five arms at uh, Braemar it's close for refurbishment, and I'm not too sure whether the fish and chip shop's closed. So, and of course, Ballater's campsite, I think, is now under new management or independent management. So, I've got to think there's going to be quite a few people there. Yes, I think I think there will be. Um, there was um, two years ago, so um, I hope we can get on the campsite. Oh well, I'm sure we can. Uh, find some nice hotel conversation if we have to. Oh, I'm sure we'll manage one way or another, yeah.
So this is the end of town. Yeah. Uh, how many, is it 15, 16 times? Yeah, this is uh, our 16th, I'll be last. Yeah, yes. And you've said that every single one, haven't you? I have. And I've meant it on every single one as well. <laughs> I was just asking Lee, over the years now, anything you've noticed that's particularly different on this crossing, either the sort of reception you're getting from people or places that have closed or any changes, anything like that? No, I, I generally people are fine, yeah. What I have noticed is a new wave of uh, challenges coming through. And I'm starting to become one of the old men of the challenge. You know? <laughs> and I must admit, I appreciate it more now when I see all the challenges doing this epic walk. You know, how tough they are you know, to keep going. Because you know, I'm finding as I'm getting older, you know, it's getting harder. So I really appreciate when I see these uh, men and women doing this in the 70s and 80s and 90s. Yeah. Hats off them. yeah, it's very uh, impressive. Well, uh, there's a difference in the young people. They seem to come charging through, you know, maybe it's because they've got maybe fishing uh, now than what we were when we were young. Well, they seem to charge through, you know, jumping over rivers as if it's nothing. <laughs> yeah. So, but it is good to have a, a new generation come through. Yes, it's good yeah. to have new blood. And how about the uh, the overseas visitors? I see we've got people from Norway and Denmark this year. Yes, well, I always uh, like to meet uh, uh, the foreign brigade, and they're always very friendly, and uh, I uh, enjoy your company, and uh, they always ask you questions about different things. So, so long may it continue. I think it's quite a unique walking experience for it them, is, from yeah. what they were saying. Yeah, yeah. I met the uh, three guys from uh, Denmark on the train, and they were asking me various questions about different things. And uh, only last night, they came into the into the bar, the can't go to the hotel, came over and sat with us, and they thanked me for the information that I gave them, you know, which was really nice, you know. And uh, then uh, when they left, they went out of their way to come back home to me and, you know, thank me. So, you know, it's really good. Yeah. And the band were good last night, uh, Tweed, weren't they? Well, I've known about this band, the Savage Uber, for about two years. And uh, oh, I had to buy the CD. Yes. Yeah, and they're fantastic. And I keep looking to see if they've released another CD. But I haven't come across it yet. So I'd recommend that to anybody. Yeah. If they like traditional folk music, Scottish uh, fiddle music, and accordion, whatever, played to a drum with a rock beat or a scar beat. You know, yeah. That's that's the attraction. It really yeah. makes the place rock. Yeah, they certainly are a major major musical attraction to to Aviemore. So, if you're ever coming through, look out for the band Tweed. Well, it's a fairly easy day today, thankfully, because uh, we had a bit of a late start this morning. Yes. Um, over the next few days, if the weather is as promised, it looks like it could get a bit wetter and a bit windier again. But we've had a, f- a few good walking days. Yes, yeah. I mean, the start, the sunshine of the oh, that's beautiful, two days. Yeah. You could have been in Tenerife, yeah. in all honesty. And then, obviously, the weather came in, but that's part and parcel of it. You just put up with it and carry on. You know, a lot of Palomo jackets failed. Luckily, mine seemed to hold out very well. But Lee's, his jacket failed, but I always carry a spare hard shell. Very lightweight. So Lee was able to use that, and I, so we could get through the bad weather without too much trouble. So there's a lesson there for anybody. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's Always a sh- hard shell. Yeah. With your Panama. Especially if you're on a, a long two-week trip. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So we'll carry on plodding on to uh, Glenmore Lodge and uh, make our way round to the uh, lock, and then. Campsite tonight's up by the stream, isn't it? Yeah, by the river, the, the bridge. Yeah. 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 Super. Well, thanks, then, Tone. The Outdoors Station has been producing independent audio and video podcasts since 2005, reaching an audience of millions around the world. 
If you're looking for more inspiring tales, interviews or experiences, please visit the extensive library on our website. Every day, thousands of people download our audio podcasts. Our aim is to inform, inspire and entertain lovers of the great outdoors, to preserve the wilderness and to celebrate our deep relationship with it. Well, hello, it's Friday evening and I'm camped in um, alongside the Geldy, just on the approach to Braemar. A little bit short of Whitebridge, but we had a long day today, a long but pleasant day. Um, Started off from our campsite last night, hit the mini gag, there we met another challenger, a very nice bloke called Greg, who's a uh, a current customer of a backpacking light and using one of their um, uh, pyramid shelters. And we walked, I guess, you know, onto the mini gay around the forest and then took a deep descent into Glenfeshie. We knew we were going to have a long day today to get here. So we uh, took a chance and thought about fording the Feshie at the point at where it braids, which is basically where our track came down. And I must admit, I uh, was a little bit sceptical of this, but um, Humphrey found the line through, and very quickly all three of us got through, and that saved us probably a good hour's walking, so we were grateful of that. Um, And as we walked down Feshi, we thought the weather was beginning to turn. Uh, The weather forecast for tomorrow on the weekend isn't good. And um, as we uh, came down from the high ground, as our track curved round to the Geldy, um, it clearly had changed. So um, two of us have camped here. Uh, Humphrey has moved on a little bit, uh, but we just wanted to get out of the wind and get an early camp and The difference between where we are now and Whitebridge isn't long and we'll soon eat that up in the morning when we're fresh and full of enthusiasm and determined to get into Braemar for a real breakfast. So, you know, not an unpleasant day, but certainly the good weather of the last couple of days has begun to to disappear. And as as soon as we hit Feshi, um, it changed. So at the moment it's still dry, but there's a quite strong wind coming uh, from the east uh, and giving the tarps here a good um, a good rattle and roll. Anyway, so maybe this is the first time for me to talk a little bit about some of the gear I am carrying, because um, it suddenly struck me the last time we did this was a few years ago now, and the gear will be very different. Um, and I'll start by talking about my shelter. This is a, a brand new shelter from Colin Ibbotson, who many of you will know as a uh, friend of the outdoor station and, and long distance hiker. And Colin was an engineer, a, a, an aeronautics engineer, and a bit of a perfectionist. And basically, he's honed his design down over months and months of trail walking in the States, New Zealand, and uh, let alone here. So it's a little bit uh, like a hex amid tent, a little bit like the mountain lowell cricket, um, but not quite. Uh, The back, you pitch into the wind and uh, has three catenary cut seams, which means it's pretty stable in the back at the wind. And then at the front... There's a beak, so we're talking about fabric that doesn't go to the floor, but it just provides you just the right amount of rain coverage. Uh, But the nice thing about this is this beak has a zip in it, which means that you can arrange the doors. You can either have them both open, so in other words, it becomes a, 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 a normal tarp, or you can have one door open. You can have both doors zipped together, but the zipper open so you can see the sky. Lots of variations of uh, uh, how to use this tarp. But um, Colin has a reputation for 
not liking movement and he shelters and this doesn't move much you can probably hear a bit of rattling and rolling now but there's a pretty fierce wind blowing down the valley that we've been glad to get out of so that's the shelter and the other thing that I'll mention uh, tonight and we'll talk more about gear later on are my shoes now I've been using Innovate Terox for I don't know, ever since I started the challenge now, but they can be coming to be a little bit more difficult to get hold of. Um, and the original Terok 330s, which many people liked, were then superseded by the new Teroks, which are not a bad shoe, but um, I don't feel they shed water as effectively as the first generation do. And on the challenge, or walking in Scotland certainly, um, that's very important, because certainly this time you spent, feel as if you're walking through a river every 20 minutes or so. So um, I looked around and asked on the net what were people using, and a number of people said they used the Brooks Cascadia shoe. So I bought one of these, I think the Cascadia Model 9, last year's model, and used it through the summer and the autumn, uh, and was very impressed with it, so much so that I bought a new pair of Cascadia 10s, which I think are this year's model, um, to take on the challenge and in many ways they're a great trail shoe they're um, nice and broad so your toes have got lots of move to move around in there um, there's a fair amount of cushioning in the midsole but they're no means heavy and the mesh on these shoes um, certainly sheds water faster than the second generation toe ox so all in all I was quite pleased with them the only thing that worried me a little bit was the grip because one thing that the Innovate Toox did brilliantly well was uh, was deal with all kinds of terrains, really. And that's where these have fallen short. There's an l- awful lot of mud on these trails and um, the grip on these just doesn't seem to be able to cope with it, so much so that it's affecting my confidence a little bit as I've been going through some muddy ground and I've, I've had to slow down and adapt my walking style and also the grip seems to struggle a little bit on very steep slopes where on heather and grass it's fine but when you start getting a path with lots of bits of shingly stone in it um, then it really start they start having difficulties so they are a shoe that I've recommended to people and um, you know they're all not a great all-round trail shoe and I know many walkers who I really admire use them particularly in the States uh, but I'm really not sure they're right for bad Scottish weather. So there you go. Um, Collins Shelter, absolutely uh, perfectly designed for the kind of weather we're getting now. Still very lightweight. The inner tent that comes with it, um, again, very clever design. That and the top weigh about 650 grams together. That's about all. Uh, very pleased with that. And uh, the shoes, well... In many ways, I am very pleased with them, but um, I really don't think they're a good choice for the TGO Challenge. And that's given me uh, a few predicaments over the last week or so. Anyway, so that's me. So I'm going to sign off now. Uh, And tomorrow morning, I should be up early, strolling towards Braemar and the promise of breakfast at the old bakery. And um, no doubt there'll be old friends to catch up with, uh, new friends to interview and um we'll see you then it is now 7:45 on friday and we've pitched up at uh Bynack stables by the stream uh this is where we uh camped before if you look at the 2013 video uh, with the guys, um, yeah, very easy walk. We left having more around 10. Uh, we just walked around down the pavement and then along the forestry cycling track, walking track. Uh, had a nice um, uh, coffee and, and bun and cake at uh, the sort of uh, Glenmore Lodge area uh, on the, the cafe at the side of the road there in uh, the information centre and then carried on and we came round here I think we were here by about 3 o'clock 3.30 something like that 
uh, just as the weather just started to change. It had been pleasant enough in the morning, no rain, um, and it just started to rain uh, and gusts uh, were beginning. But we all three managed to pitch our tents um, just prior to the, the weather getting worse. And it stayed that way up until about sort of 6.30ish. So we, we were all just laying around basically, um, resting and checking our stuff and doing some maintenance. And I found I got a hole in my sock and Rose uh, brought a little sewing kit with me, has uh, darned that for me. Bless. So um, my sock is hopefully uh, repaired now enough to continue the journey. And that has been about it, really. We've just had a anniversary celebratory meal of my favourite dehydrated meal, which is uh, venison in red wine with potato smash and veg and things. And it's lovely, such a rich, flavoursome meal. Uh, definitely one of the uh, the best ones going to be in the book. It will be in the book. Uh, and that was a, a lovely um, lovely meal. It gave Lee and Tony a little bit of a taster. Not too much, we understand. We don't want to give them too much and get them carried away. Uh, but as you can hear, the wind has actually died down now to an acceptable flutter, uh, which is quite good because it was getting a bit of a racket earlier on. And we've decided that uh, 7... What are we, 7.45 now? We'll um, get our heads down uh, and try and have an early start tomorrow to get over the top and uh, head towards Glen Avon. Forecast not looking good. Forecast isn't looking good, you're absolutely right, which is the thing that is concerning all of us after our previous days of uh, horizontal rain and and head down. Uh, so we're probably going to get over the top and across down the other side as soon as we can. We're expecting to have a, a lot more snow pockets as well, um, which there seems to be a bit more snow this side of the Cairngorms uh, than there was over in the Monolia. Um, but hopefully, once we get over the top and down the other side tomorrow, uh, it, life will be a lot easier and it'll just be the usual trudge through the tracks and river crossings. Yeah, well, yet the sort of our, our planned route of Ben McDewey was sort of uh, forfeited, really, due to the weather and time and, and to those sort of pressures. So, sadly, uh, it'll have to be another time, another trip. However, let us be realistic, leaving Aviemore... Yes, that's true. Leaving Aviemore, your pack is always far heavier than you think it might be because it's the temptations of the flesh, yeah. simply. They have yeah. a supermarket. I mean, we met Emma, didn't we, at Glenmore Lodge, and she too said that you know she ended up in the temptations of Tesco's, and I think I must have be carrying about five kilos of food because you pick up fresh supplies like sandwiches for today and pasties for tomorrow and... And fruit, you like your fruit, yeah, of course, yeah. you can't buy just Half a couple a of them. apples. You <laughs> can't buy two, you've got to buy six. Yeah. So um, we've eaten, now eaten our way through the six apples, and uh, we attacked the bananas this morning. Yeah. So that's reduced a, a certain amount of mass. But, uh, yeah, word of advice, if you're going to do something like Ben McDewey, you want to do it with a light pack, don't come out of Aviemore mm. on the same day. Uh, because as you start to approach the Larry Grew, you really do notice that extra couple of kilos. You can speak from experience, can't you? <laughs> yes, I can. I can, because uh, I have, in fact, left Aviemore carrying far too much whiskey on one particular trip and regretted it. So much so, I had to doubly regret it, because I had to give it away <laughs> to reduce the weight. But anyway, that's another story. So that closes today off for us, um, and hopefully if the weather holds, we will be up and out early tomorrow and uh, pick up then. Yeah, a nice, quiet, restful afternoon, short day and easy day and time to just loll about in the tent, which is a rare occurrence for us somehow. <laughs> yes, well, we did say this time we wanted to enjoy the camping. So um, are you enjoying it? Yeah, actually, it's been great so far. And again, another fantastic world camp- camping spot. Yeah, Beautiful. super. So on that note, I shall say good night. The Great Outdoors Challenge is an annual self-supported walking event across the highlands of Scotland, west coast to east coast. First held in 1980, it's a non-competitive test of backcountry skills, navigation and stamina. The challenge is held every May and is sponsored by The Great Outdoors, The Walkers magazine and supported by specialist outdoor footwear company Hanvag in association with Fial Raven. 
Every challenger starts their hike by signing out from one of around a dozen locations on the west coast, strung between Torridon in the north and Ardrashig in the south. And your journey will end when you reach the eastern seaboard between Fraserburgh and Arbroath. Between those chosen points in the months prior, you'll plan your own routes, which will be checked by experienced vetters. You can plan a high or low-level route, or one that blends both. That flexibility, combined with the vast and varied geographical area available, is one of the challenge's unique attractions. Many challengers return year after year. Some plan entirely new routes, some repeat favourite sections you're free to choose. The challenge is a backpacking event. You'll need to carry everything on your back, including food and shelter, but it's up to you whether you camp all the way across or use a mixture of camping, hostels and B&Bs. The extraordinary hospitality offered by many establishments has become legendary over the event's 30-plus years. The challenge demands a good level of competence in navigation, survival techniques, camp craft and general hill craft. It's also renowned for its sociability and camaraderie and you'll always find fellow challengers willing to help in any way they can. The event is restricted to 300 participants and entry forms can be found in the October issue of the Great Outdoors magazine every year. Well, good morning. Day nine, Saturday, at uh, nine o'clock. We left Binac Stables about eight. We've just done, done the climb to the top of Binac Moor, uh, which was a good wake-up call for the old body. But we made a fairly assertive attack on the climb. As you can probably hear, there is a crosswind and it's a bitter cold one at that. Uh, three guys turned up last night when we were all fast asleep, about 10, 10.30. I think they were on day release by their wives, and uh, sadly they woke us up, but not to worry. This morning they were saying the forecast is uh, gale force winds, thunder, if possible lightning on the hilltops, basically keep away from the hilltops, uh, due in later on today. And as we sort of packed up, looked up the valley where the wind was coming from last night, and uh, it was a very ominous, dark presence, certainly heading our way. So uh, we all packed with normal speed, but wanted to get going, to get over the top of Binac Moor and down the other side to the, uh, to the body uh, before it hit us. Uh, regular listeners or viewers will... Remember, this is the way I came with Lee and Tony in 2013. And if you look at the video on that, you'll see what sort of conditions we were in then. Um, although it's a bit of wind, it's perfectly clear at the moment. Uh, I've taken a few more video clips, of course. Um, but the track's good. Um, visibility is good. Uh, cloud cover is definitely still appears to be coming in from our right. But it hasn't quite got here yet. We've had a few flurries of ice rain as it splattered the side of your cheek and gave you an early morning call. Uh, But we all reckon we'll be across the top and down the other side, our snow fields permitting, uh, within the hour, I would guess, uh, because we've we've covered some good ground fairly rapidly. And if this path is as good as it looks to be most of the way, unless we have any bog hopping to do, it shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, wind died down last night. It was a good night. Um, we were all saying, actually, we're spending the best part of 10 to 12 hours in our tents, either dozing or fast asleep or listening to music or whatever. We didn't bring anything with us this time, so we just uh, haven't found it difficult to go to sleep, to be honest. Uh, the Neo Airs have been great, certainly keeping the, the lumps and bumps out of our backs. And the quilts have been fantastic. Uh, Just occasionally putting on our insulation material when the temperature suddenly drops at about 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock and a frost hits. But uh, on the whole, everything has been pretty good. And in fact, gear-wise, there's only one item I don't think we've used. Sorry, one item I don't think we haven't used. 
uh, and that was, uh, well I have anyway, which is a spare base layer which is not wasted, you don't know what's going to happen over the next few days. Um, so all in all, pretty good crossing really, uh, so far, uh, entertaining and on all levels, socially as well as, as weather-wise. Um, I'll certainly be giving a lot of the people I've met more of a name check when I do the introductions and voiceovers. Uh, I've got pretty poor memory for names when you're actually trying to walk, <laughs> record, video and work out where you're going at the same time. Well I can see the moor spreading ahead of us now and I'm going to break away off this path shortly and take a shortcut through. There's sort of three peaks on the horizon in front of us and it's the uh, middle of the left two peaks that we'll take a shortcut through and that'll cut off about the best part of five or six K from the established path which goes around the the uh, perimeter of the of the peaks probably a lot drier uh, but certainly uh, could possibly take longer time but you never know do you <laughs> doing this sort of thing you sometimes have a kilometer or two to do and you think yeah t 20 minutes I'll be across that like we did with both lag and locked took the best part of two hours well as you can hear the winds giving its best shot so hopefully if this is recorded okay I'll include it and if it hasn't I'll have to do it as a voiceover the home of UK based audio and video podcasts for lovers of the great outdoors everywhere if you have any feedback, questions or suggestions, why not drop us a line directly to our email address, info at theoutdoorstation.co.uk. So, tonight's meal is chicken chasseur. Chasseur. And I have to say, I don't know whether it's the walking or the appetite, but my word, this food. It's my, my cooking, darling. Your cooking. My recipes and your, cooking. Your recipes and cooking this trip has been absolutely wonderful. Hunger's the best sauce, as the saying yeah, goes. Yeah, absolutely. So, where have we got to? We made it to where? Oh, um... Map. Oh. What was I? This page. We've made it to Corn Devon Lodge. Corn Devon. Devon Lodge. Corn Devon Lodge. We started at Binex Stables. Uh, just gone eight this morning. Um, a bit scared about the weather forecast because the people that were camping there said it was going to be pretty dangerous. To say the least. Well, there'd been a warning not to go in the hills, hadn't there? Mm. They, they went on the challenge and basically I said, well, what are you doing here? And they said, well, when you get an opportunity... A, a free pass. pass. Yeah, a weekend away from... So they were boys on a weekend away. So we made up to Binet Moor, where I think I recorded the last piece okay, depending on the weather. And the weather just came, kept changing, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, going up over the top, it was snow. I mean, real snow. <laughs> mm. Blizzardy yeah. snow. Blizzardy snow and hail. Going underfoot wasn't too bad because it, Sleep, it hadn't yeah. been raining. No, it wasn't too bad. When I compare it to 2013 when I did with Lee and Tony, visibility was zero and it was just appalling. But again, I took some video clips so you can see what it's like. This time round, it was... Um, it was, uh, the, the wind was always bitter. Yeah, I was going, it still wind. is now, isn't yeah. it? It's still cold now. The sun's shining, but it's cold wind. So. Made, anyway. it, made it to the bother, didn't we, over the top there? Made it to the bother um, with the Hardy brothers, the Hardy twins. 
<laughs> um, it's Alan and David. And then um, had a rest there and started down Glen Avon, which is pronounced Glen Arn. By and the River Avon, which is nothing like Stratford on Avon, <laughs> complete opposite. And there's not a cosmetic inside. Cosmetic. But it's been, yeah, Avon. Avon uh, Cosmetics. Mm, yeah, okay. It's a joke. Oh. Okay. Um, I mean, the, the weather, but the weather all day through mm. has been changeable, hasn't it? We've been Completely. wearing waterproofs and getting overheated, and then we put on a windshirt or whatever else, and then it starts to snow or rain or hail, s- hail again. And the only constant factor has been the wind. We've had yeah. beautiful sunshine, blue skies, then we've had sleet, then we've had hail, then we've had sunshine again. Yeah, in fact, we all stripped off and went, right, OK, it's not going to rain anymore. Got into our wind shirts and stride along. Part, what, 10 minutes? minutes yeah. 20 minutes? And it all came again. So, we got down here about, I think it was about 5 o'clock, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm mm. sure it was about 5 o'clock. Yeah. Um, after an 8 o'clock start, which wasn't too bad. Um... There's a few guys pitched here, isn't there? Definitely. Um, and about, we reckon about a 30k day. So, long day, fairly tiring. But to be fair, we are pitched in nice sunshine. Very blustery wind, but nice sunshine. Which gives us time to dry things out. Recoup. And uh, cook a lovely meal like this. But the um, river crossings, you said, were much better than last time. Mmm. Yeah, when I do the video this year, I will might slip in the video of the previous time, just so hmm. people can see the difference when the Contrast. weather's bad and yeah. when the weather's good. Whereas before all, all the dramatic music came out and... Uh, it, you know, it was flowing in at such a rate and such a depth that if you got caught in it, you'd be swept away. Now, it had dropped by two or three foot, and you just rode across it. Skip, skip across. <laughs> Except for Tony, of course, who had some very trendy little train um, waders. Sort of waders that he got from the States. So that speeded the process up for him as he's wearing boots. Saw Alan Sloman and Phil Lambert down the road, resting. Um, I think they had their cheese and wine party last night, which must have been a pretty wet occasion, because the forecast was thunderstorms and... In fact, we spoke to that couple of ladies, didn't we? There were two ladies in the body, weren't they? Yeah. The first one we got over the top, and they said they'd been they'd had terrific storms last night, thunder and lightning. And we were in the next valley, and it was a bit blustery. And we did have rain, but we didn't have thunder or lightning. So we're feeling quite smug, really, in the sense that um, we're here, we're sorted. Sun um, shining. The sun shining. It's going down slowly. We're enjoying a fantastic meal again. And we'll be up tomorrow, hopefully, and gone by eight. Um, heading to Ballater to uh, top up our food parcels and get a, a campsite. Uh, campsite and a hot meal. Hot shower. And a hot shower. Always important. Before heading up over Mount Keen, which should, again, fingers crossed, be another lovely day. But we'll see how that goes. So that's basically us on day nine, nine. I think, as it would. Yeah. And, um, yeah, we'll catch you tomorrow. Well, hello, it's Saturday evening and I'm in Bremar, which is usually the social heart of the challenge, uh, but not so this year. Um, most of the activity in this village revolves around the Five Farms, which is a pub strategically placed in the centre of the village, which has a really big room that can hold about 150 people or so. Uh, and tables and chairs outside, so if the weather's good, you can sit outside as well. And that uh, pub has been closed for refurbishment for two years, so 
Um, a lot of people seem to have missed out um, Brahma this year. Also, quite often the village puts on special events. There's a, a rock group, kind of covers group, who aren't bad actually, called Bingo's Ring, Bingo Rings, that often play at the Moorfield Hotel, which seems to be a kind of focus point for entertainment. But uh, there was nothing going on there either this year. So Braemar was a kind of strange little place to be, um, a mere pale shadow of itself in uh, TGO Challenge terms. So the day started off uh, reasonably well with a, a walk-in from the camp spot. Uh, the camp spot we chose was not a good one, really. It was too close to the water, and we were buffeted by a very strong icy wind all day. In fact, that icy wind has carried on uh, right the way through the day. So it was a quick whiz down there into Mar Lodge, where um, the customary tea and biscuits for TGO Challengers were available. And then the long road walk into Braemar itself, uh, breakfast in one of the cafes there and then the usual round of wandering about and uh, buying some spare uh, replacement socks in the gear shop and so on and the focus for most of us this year was the Invercald Hotel which is the other big hotel uh, in the village which I've not been into before and was very pleasant the food was nice um, Humphrey managed to get a room there at a reasonable uh, late room price but the uh, the Invercult Hotel doesn't have the big room that the Fife does and so it was a bit limited as a, a meeting place for challengers so last night I started talking about gear so let's have a little look at some other some other stuff that I've got um, waterproofs this year I've been walking in my new jacket which is the Alpameo um, waterproof smock from PhD. The PhD are famous for their down products and indeed I've got a few of those with me. And this smock was um, uh, recommended to me by fellow challenger Gordon Green. And it's from a generic material. I'm not sure what it is. It might even be Event because that can be licensed now and used under different names. Um, but it's uh, it's easily breathable enough for me. What I like about it, well it has two features that are particularly good. One is that being a smock, it's very weatherproof. And the zips on the, uh, the kind of chest and the hood uh, and the little map pocket are waterproof zips, which is quite handy indeed. So you feel very well protected. And I've never had any water uh, leakage in that jacket as long as I've been using it. So that's good. The second feature about it is it's slightly oversized. It doesn't have a scoop back or anything like that, but it's a, it's a, quite a long jacket. But it's sized so that you can slip it on top of a PhD down jacket or down vest, which is quite a handy thing to uh, to have during the bad weather. Uh, my waterproof trousers were um, Berghaus pack lights. Um, these have the, uh, uh, the virtue of being very light indeed, packed down very easily. Uh, very breathable and and very comfortable and they're very affordable you can still get them in most places uh, at a very decent cost and moving on to uh, walking gear uh, uh, the daily walking gear I've been using uh, merino base layers from uh, Bergens of Norway and uh, which is uh, pretty comfortable uh, a long sleeve t-shirt and boxer briefs and they've uh, stood up to the, the usual uh, two week long pong test rather well uh, my walking trousers are from Jack Wolfskin uh, and I I discovered their walking trousers a few years ago and I, I keep going back to them I think they're very good value for money and uh, pretty good lightweight these have got a little bit of stretch in them uh, I've got a, a vent down the sides with a, a, a mesh in a, uh, and also a little inbuilt gator as well if you if you want to use it. My mid layer is a uh, vaporized jacket from Rab. I really like these. They're made from the equilibrium fabric, which I think is actually re a recycled uh, fabric. It's got a slight micro fleece lining. 
lots of venting options, uh, breathes very, very well, uh, and can actually deal with quite a bit of um, water as well. It has a good inbuilt hood too. On top of that, I have been carrying my ever faithful Tilly hat, which is uh, showing a few signs of fade and wear now. Gloves from Rab, again using the equilibrium fabric. Um, maybe not the warmest gloves I've found, but um, very helpful when you're tracking the fat because of this equilibrium fabric on the outside, they do dry out a little quicker uh, than other gloves, and, and that's very welcome as well. So you can hear there's probably there's a little bit of wind blowing. Uh, so that's uh, that's that bit of the gear. Uh, and tomorrow night I'll have a look at um, the um, sleeping system and the cooking system. So that's it from uh, Bremar. It's uh, uh, a very familiar place. I'm at the campsite. Very good facilities. Uh, nice staff. But not quite the party atmosphere that you get in some years. And, and that's maybe some people will uh, like that more. So tomorrow is a reasonably straightforward walk. Uh, but a long one, 19 miles or so, out through the Balmoral Estate, which is always interesting and, and varied, uh, beautiful Caledonian forest. And then a reasonably long stretch of road into Balata itself. Uh, and Balata rapidly becoming my favourite uh, meeting place towards the end of the challenge. So I'll speak to you from there. Thank you for listening to this podcast. To hear more from our extensive free library, please visit the website at theoutdoorstation.co.uk. Join us next time as the journey across Scotland continues on the TGO Challenge.